All right, folks, we're going into the NFC East. You're listening to the Mr. Josh podcast. Sometimes it's YouTube only. Sometimes it's going to be through iTunes and Spotify. And you can also go to the Mr. Josh podcast dot com and listen to it there on our Buzzsprout feed. That's our host or my host. I also do Ruthless Politics. You can go to RuthlessPolitics.com. I talk politics with um, a close friend of mine and uh, someone that I do business with, uh, Patrick Zarelli, a.k.a. Kid Chronic. I am Trees on that show, and we dove, we go, we go head first into politics and talk a lot of mad shit. It gets pretty good, and if you follow politics like you do sports, um, that would be something that you might very well be interested in as well. So let's just jump in right here. We've got the NFC East. Move that cell phone right there. We're going to go NFC East. This one is also kind of a dogfight for the top two. And um, I think that a lot of people like Philly. It seems like a lot of people like Philly. But uh, I like Dallas more than Philly. And let's take a look right here. Let's go over Dallas's roster dallas a lot of the same players a couple of changes i don't know if he did all that good in that first game but so dak prescott waiting on his uh contract to come through ezekiel Elliott got his contract amari cooper tavon austin's been there for a little bit michael gallup stepped up and had a big day uh in week one um randall cobb there they got jake jason witten blake jarwin is really technically the guy that they'd probably rather do good um the youngster so that's your dallas lineup there uh much the same of what you've seen before out of dallas let's take a look at philly because we're going over the nfc east right now there we go so carson wentz is back no more nick Foles. now it's josh mccown nate sudfeld they are uh, they're loaded it back with question marks. Young guys. They traded to get Jordan Howard from the Bears. They like Miles Sanders very fast, and they brought Darren Sproles back, which was pretty cool. They brought Darren Sproles back. The guy's a little burner, man. I don't care how old he gets. And then your receivers, Alshon Jeffrey. They picked Deshaun Jackson back up, and Nelson Aguilar is not bad for a number three. This is a very talented threesome. And then you got Zach Ertz being the target monster. He's someone that can get like 100 catches in a year. He may not this year, but Zach Ertz is certainly a uh, a beast when it comes to tight end. And while we're down here, let's take a look at the rest of the NFC East. Washington, why I'm not quite that big on this team. Uh, Washington thinks one of those right next to Tennessee. They're one of those eight and eight, seven and nine, nine and seven. You really don't know exactly what you're going to get from. Them. Um, so Case Keenum, the starter, because you know with the Alex Smith debacle. So Case Keenum comes. Uh, Washington drafts Dwayne Haskins. A little bit of a battle here. Keenum beats him out, and then the running back situation. I mean, they got Adrian Peterson. But he's the old man. So this Darius, I think it's Juice or Geis. I don't know exactly how he prefers it. I think it might be Creole and Juice, like um, Jim Carrey in uh, Cable Guy. Uh, would you like a little Juice? And Chris Thompson, who another good back. I mean, not a great back, but a good back. Terry McLaurin, Paul Richardson, Trey Quinn. This is not a loaded receiving core. Very young, very untested, uh, very interesting. And then Jordan Reed, always hurt. Vernon Davis, still hanging on to a career. He's been in the league many, many years. People wouldn't even know that Vernon Davis was a a big tight end on the 49ers when he came in. And then your final team, did I scoop by him? Right there is the New York Giants. There we go. Eli Manning holding on, folks. He's still holding on. They go and get Daniel Jones. little controversy there. When does Jones finally start? How many losses is it going to take? We don't know. I got the big blue hat uh, because my father was a Giants fan and I love Lawrence Taylor. Uh, This team is not like the teams that I enjoyed in the past. Saquon Barkley, they went the right way on that running back pick now. Doesn't doesn't look so bad, does it? And then receiver-wise... 
They go get Golden Tate. He's suspended for four games on um, a substance that he readily told the league about, and they still fucked him. Um, Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, they're hurt. Corey Latimer, it's not exactly a, 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 a bang em up group. Shepard's not bad. Golden Tate might do well for them. It's still not a great group of, of receivers. And then Evan Ingram is, is, is pretty, pretty good. Uh, and he's done well for them. And then, so going now into the schedules, this is why let's figure out who's going to get what record here. We'll start with Dallas. Because it's my personal belief that they'll probably be number one. Now, as you see, we're doing this with a week in. Trust me when I tell you, as I've gone over my picks, I had Dallas beating the Giants in that game anyways. And so did the whole entire world. So don't get too excited about that being there. Okay, so let's go through this Dallas situation, shall we? Okay. So, I have them beating the Giants, obviously, at Washington. <laughs> I'm going to give that a gimme game. I still think they're going to win it uh, versus Miami. I think that's a win. At New Orleans, let's give that a loss. The Green Bay home game, I'm going to make that a 50-50 for now. At Jets, I say that's a win. Philly at home, I'm going to give them a win. I'm going to say they'll split with Philly. At Giants... I think they're going to beat them again. I don't think there's any worry about that. Minnesota at home, I'm going to give that a 50-50. It's a tough game. I'm going to say they'll beat Detroit. I'm going to say they'll lose at New England. There's a fun game. Buffalo at home, I say is a win. At Chicago, I'll even give that a loss. Just to keep it honest. Home game versus the Rams. And that's just a random game. They're not even playing that division. I guess the division they're playing is the, uh, yeah, Green Bay, Minnesota, Chicago. For, okay. So, yeah, they're playing the um, NFC North. So, the Rams at home, I'm going to give that a 50-50. They got a lot of those. At Philly, we're going to call that a loss. And then Washington, the final win. So, before our, we have our 50-50s, I have Dallas going 7-5 and five with with the the 50 50s so if we give them those hmm nine and seven that's a tough schedule but i think dallas is going to be better than nine and seven i really do so i'm going to go with 10 i'm going to say they're going to take three of those 50 50s this is a, a fairly tough schedule it's a tough division but we're going to have dallas at 10 and 6. Okay, so that's Dallas. Let's go to Philly. Let's take a look also before we do that. What was Dallas last year? 10 and 6. Should be right where they were. Making that making that play. Okay. Let's take a look at Philly. You probably say to yourself, how do you go through so fast for these? How can you make a determination? Well, because it's not really that hard sometimes. Some of these games are obvious. By the way, I'm not picking against spreads here. Um, so it does make it a little easier when it's not against the number. Okay. I I had Philly uh, beating Washington. I even had him <laughs> covering, which is even more sad. So I'm gonna. I have that. I would have picked them to win that game, anyways. That was a, a home game for them. I have them. I have them. Them beating Atlanta in Atlanta. I don't think Atlanta is good at all. I'll take them beating Detroit at home as well. At Green Bay, we'll give that a loss. The Jets at home. The Jets at home. I will give them a win there. At Minnesota, we'll give that a loss. At Dallas, I'll give that a loss. At Buffalo, I'm going to give them a win there. Chicago at home, I'm going to make that a 50-50. You say, what's a 50-50? This could go either way. If that game was in Chicago, I'm picking Chicago. But because it's in Philly, they have a shot. But they could lose that game. New England at home, I'm going to call that a loss. Listen, this is a tough schedule. How about this for three in a row between the bye? Chicago, New England, Seattle, are you kidding me? 
tough. So we have New England with the loss. <sighs> Seattle at home. I'm going to give that a 50-50. Miami, I'll give them the win. Giants at home, I give them that win. At Washington, I'm going to put that in the 50-50. Home game versus Dallas, that could go in the 50-50. And then at New York, I'm going to say they will beat the Giants as well. I do have Philly at that point at 8 and 4 with four 50-50s. So, again, Philly's going to challenge. Some people have them ahead of Dallas. So let's split those up. I'm going to say Philly, also 10 and 6. Now, they can easily go 11 and 5. So Philly will challenge for that top spot with Dallas. That will be probably come down to a tie-breaking situation. Certainly should. What did Philly do last year? They were 9 and 7. So this would be an improvement. Now, why is Washington not going to do so well? Here's why. Let's take a look. A, they're not that good. B, let's take a look. They got to play. So, I also would have predicted Washington would lose that game. Home game versus Dallas. <laughs> I'm going to put that at 50 50. Maybe they have a shot at home. Uh, home game in Chicago, I'm putting that as a loss. At Giants, I'll give them the win there. Although the Giants can, with the home, that, that should be a split. But this team's got to win some games. New England, that's a loss. At Miami, I'll give them that win. Frisco, I'm going to give them that win. Home game versus Frisco. At Minnesota is a loss. At Buffalo, I'm going to make that a 50-50 game. Only because it's at Buffalo. Jets at home, I'll give them that win. Detroit at home, I'll give them that win. At Carolina, that's a loss. At Green Bay, that's a loss. Philly at home, already lost. Uh, well, I'm going to make that a 50-50. Giants at home, we'll give them that win. At Dallas, that's a loss. So I have Washington at 6-7. and seven. Before the Splitsky games. And. With the Splitskis. If I, if I give them two of them. Which they probably don't deserve. They'll be eight and eight. So. I think it's fair. It's fair. To do that. Because eight and eight is nothing to be excited about. And what do you know? They're another eight and eight team. Just like we talked about. That's what they do. Hey, what were they last year? Seven and nine. Look at so much of the league. You ever notice something about the league here? Look how many teams are mediocre or that are either seven and nine, nine and seven, or eight and eight. One, I count that one that with a tie. That's two. That's three. That's four. Five, six, seven. I'm going to count that as a seven and a nine, eight, nine, ten. 10 teams out of 32 are right smack in the middle, basically 50-50 squads. Basically. 10 teams. Pretty crazy. Last team, Giants. Why are they going to finish in the basement? Well, because they're just not that good. So what do we got for the Giants? Another year. All right. So we everyone had them losing to Dallas. That is not a surprise. Buffalo at home. I'm going to give them that win. Buffalo's defense is tough. They could lose that. At Tampa. I would consider the loss. I'm going to put that in the middle because I think Tampa is, uh, while I thought they were going to be great, I'm not, I, I, with this coaching change, I'm not so sure. Not so sure after week one. That one may have uh, may affect what I would have picked there. But I'm putting them in the 50-50 anyways. Uh, Washington home game. I'll give the Giants that, although that's tough. Minnesota, that's a loss. At New England, that's a loss. Arizona home, I'll give the Giants that win. I'll say they are lose to Detroit in Detroit. I say they're going to lose to that Dallas. I think they'll lose both Dallas games. 
Um, at Jets, I'm going to put that in the 50-50. They have a slight shot, although I don't think it's all that good. At Chicago's a loss. The Green Bay game should be a loss even at home. At Philly, I'll make that a loss. There's a nice three in a row after the bye, huh? That's a thank you. Miami, they get to play at home. We'll give them that win. That's four. At Washington, I'm going to say that's also a loss. And then the final Philly game is probably a loss. So at that point, we have the Giants at 4 and 10 with two flippity flops. And let's give them, we'll just let's split those down the middle. So the Giants should be 5 and 11. What was the Giants record last year, folks? Surprise! <laughs> it's it's not too hard to figure this shit out, man. It's not too hard to figure this shit out. You're sitting there thinking so hard. All right. So, and I realized that I had this on the flip on all my other videos. I fucked it up. But here you go. NFC East predictions. Right there. We're going to go to the NFC North right after this.